previously during the investigation. These puppies are hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Deadly Premonition. But earlier this time, rather than long wait compared to last time, I think we might as well have a bit of a catch up while we uh, wait for the game to start. Short and sweet. However, we'll see a few more of those as the game progresses. They do get a bit more detailed, I guess. So if you remember, we <coughs> finally finished with the Sheriff's Department in terms of looking at Aunt <coughs> pardon me, geez, Anna Graham's file. Um, now we're off to the hospital to check out the body, uh, check the coroner's report, I guess, and see if we can find any clues, evidence, uh, anything of interest there. Can you provide a car for me? You don't even know how to get there. Which is another good reason for me to drive, George. I need to learn my way around town. Oh, man. Always the ear big, you I'll ride with you. I want to keep an eye on him. Fair enough. Just one thing, Agent Morgan. Your involvement in this case is limited. That means you don't have to learn your way around town. We weren't waving, we were just flopping you off. Alright, let's see what these guys have to say. Head toward the hospital. We all want this case solved as quickly as possible. Oh, looks like it started to rain. Perfect time as usual, weather. And Emily. We need to get to the hospital and get those autopsy results. <clears throat> well, we might as well get in the car. See where the road takes us. Uh, I guess they'll join us, Lex. There we go. There's a speed limit? George, what are you, his mother? Yeah, at least you could wear some seatbelt scars. Agent York isn't accustomed to the town yet. Isn't a little slack? Hmm. Well said, George. Well then, Agent York, let's get going. Sure, sounds good. Yes, let's. Everyone buckled up? Good. Now before we get going, I might as well point out that you can actually get out of the car or not get in the car at all and go in for lunch as you see we've got the icon at the bottom left and you can also see it on the inside of the building that means lunch time is now available at the police department it happens every time well as you see from nine to one uh, regardless of what time you go in it will take you to one o'clock so if you go in there now it'll go to one o'clock if you go there at one minute to one it'll take you to one o'clock as well so i decided to do a little bit of pre-recording and let's watch what happens see you soon Thank you. 
It's nice to be able to eat lunch together like this. No matter how much we get along, remember, Agent Morgan is a member of a different organization, and I doubt he'll be of much help with the case. Come on, George, be nice. It's okay, I'm used to it. This is the typical reaction of most local sheriffs who are really good at what they do when the FBI comes to help with a case. I understand the mentality completely. We've all seen it on TV, but it happens in real life all the time. So George is the defensive home turf sheriff? Ah, uh, yes, definitely. And the FBI agent is going to make the sheriff look bad, just like the TV shows? That's not what I mean, George. When you're good at what you do, you tend to defend your work aggressively. You simply displayed a perfectly natural reaction. A natural reaction? <laughs> Thomas, you've outdone yourself again. The food was delicious, as expected. Amazingly good. Well, thank you. That ham salad was fantastic. I wish the boys at HQ could get a taste of it. Really? I can give you some of the ham. It's homemade. Mm. Homemade ham. Amazing. My mother taught me how to make them. I have some homemade pickles, too. I was just... That's enough, Thomas. We're very busy. Agent Morgan, stop wasting time around here and let's get over to the hospital. Yeah, we better get going. We'll see you there. back now let's carry on with the drive to the police department or no it's the police department should I say to the hospital we do have a little bit of fuel missing so we should actually drive to the petrol station um, and as you see at the bottom sorry at the bottom we do have the option to talk so let's see what the guys have to say Yeah, it's not that bad. It's not that light of a room. Oh, it's been so right. So, tell me Small to your city eye. Runaways. Why do we talk Our job is to guide the people along the correct path. First and foremost. Did you say something? Oh, no, no, like you didn't hear. Okay, right now is good. And getting some fuel. 
to be. I don't understand. Actually, for some reason, I did believe that this is one of the instances like uh, racing, as you may have seen before. Apparently, we can't top up. It's closed. Ah, oh, because it's nine. Hmm. This might be a bit problematic. We really don't have enough to drive to the hospital and back in this condition. Or oh, with this little fuel. Um, I might pause it here and then we'll go further into the time and we'll catch up later. It's probably the best way of doing this, so. I believe if we get out of the car now, it will lead to us going our separate ways. Which, uh, I don't really want. So I'm actually going to pause it here and let time progress naturally. The things I do for you guys. I love you too. See you soon. Bye bye for now. So it's just hit 10 and the doors are open. Let's go top of a few. Sorry about that, I completely forgot that it does that. Um, <clears throat> well, not that it does that, but that the store wasn't open uh, at the time we got here. And it was an uh, unnecessary evil. However, it does have a bonus that we do notice that we can bribe a um, good friend once again. Who will also spit on our car just for us. And we'll fill her up as well. And lastly, we will bribe you. We've got enough money too. We've got plenty of money spare, so why not? And you notice it's gone up to 200. It does go up uh, each time you need to bribe them, so. Let's see what he has to say first. Have you been to the general scrap heap yet? I bet he could do a real fancy upgrade on your turtle of a ride. Well, the general scrap heap isn't open yet. It will be open later in the game. Um, but actually, reasonably far away from now. So that's not too much help to us at the moment, at least. And as usual, some agent on us. A bit more for crashing into that pole. <coughs> Well, at least we can head to the hospital now with no problems. Then maybe we'll have another conversation on our way there. Here's hoping, because it's going to be a boring ride otherwise. Well, they're not very talkative, so... Yes, it's up to me to provide the interesting commentary. Um, like I said in the last video, university's over for the year, so... Um, well, it does leave me time to do these videos. However, it looks like I may be working as well. Uh, due to family context, I might be doing some landscaping of all things. We'll see how that goes. And I might as well keep you updated. Um, we'll spark talk about the university at the moment quickly because um, I haven't had good results uh, unfortunately failed statistics which was really a given this semester because of how negatively I did <coughs> so um, I mean it's really no surprise to be honest however it is what it is can't do much about it can't really complain or Otherwise, um, but you know, we'll yeah, it is what it is, like I said. Uh, the other results haven't come in yet, so fingers crossed the better. Um, film actually has come in, and that wasn't a very good result, but um, I really... It is actually surprising, because with prior two essays for it, I actually did really well in, so the last one, I must have completely 
<laughs> you know, completely failed. But for it's like uh, sociology, I can't imagine that I'd get a bad mark in it. Um, considering I've done extremely well in the last two essays. Uh, yeah, I thought that was right. right. So I thought I'd better double check since I was distracted while talking. I mean, I'd have to completely abysmally fail um, the exam to get a bad mark in this. <clears throat> I mean, I could. It's possible, but I, I'd really have to do bad um, to get a bad mark in sociology at this point. Uh, psychology is really a 50-50 thing. So, we'll wait and see. But, you know, take the good with the bad, as you do. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, another news, of course, if you're watching this early enough. Um, if I upload this early enough, to be more honest. Uh, the Hobbit is airing in New Zealand, debuting in New Zealand on Wednesday, I believe. I won't be going to the premiere, but however, I will be going to see a friend who is in the movie, likely to walk through a carpet. Likely to have log on that, so we'll see what happens when that happens. Anyway, here we are. Greenville General Hospital. It's quite general. Let's have the game's not bugged up because, uh, wow, that was a long, <laughs> delayed entrance. Yes, they wanted to be ready for, uh, food poisoning. No, no, it's another leftover from the town's prosperous slumber days. Could you imagine now, though, it's easy. My mother always talked about how energy in this town used to be. Almost like a gold rush, she used to say. The rest of the hotter the fever, the faster it goes. So now there's hardly anyone left in this place. He's been watching the hotel room since the Beyond your understanding, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sorry to say that it is. That's why this case is our problem. There really isn't any need for me to get too involved. So that entrance is a slightly different if you play uh, or arrive by yourself, so we'll quickly watch that now. Enjoy. Well, it wasn't that much different. Well, I guess it was. At least there was more. What well, not as interesting as uh, Thomas's ham. Hospital? 
I'm so surprised about having computers in a hospital or a room dedicated to computers, especially in these days. I mean, I imagine every hospital in the world, even a third world country, would have a computer room or a room dedicated to computers. There they go again. Too close to home, don't you think? Fiona, don't say that. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Anna, dead and all. Don't worry. Books are written to entertain. It's good you're enjoying. What we're faced with here is a terrible crime committed in a world. Much different from that of a novel. So there's no need to apologize. Thank you, Agent Strange looking girl. I'll oh, talk to her briefly, why not? Dr. Johnson should be in the computer room. Well, thanks for that. We'll take a look around and see if we can find them. Not much of use around there. I guess we could have talked to, um... To... Well, why not? We'll talk to them. Oh, yeah, what's going on? Thanks for the words of wisdom there, Emily. Let's go to the computer room. You need to find Usher. Well, at least he's trying to be proactive by looking at the map. Kings, pawns, queens. Hmm. That's not too much help. Maybe this sign will help us. More confused than I ever was. Ah, there we see red swirlies. I think we found the place. We couldn't find him. Fiona needs to check her information. No, I don't think so. Does the doctor like playing games by any chance? What do you mean? There's a message. Hey, as you say, a big chest on that sign behind you. Place. The king passes the brook and meets the bishop. The knight takes a pawn on for the queen. What does that all mean? It's a simple puzzle. Zach, let's take him up on his challenge. It's actually too simple to be fair. But let's do it anyway. Well, king passes rook and meets bishop. Knight takes pawns to queen. Hmm. It's that simple. But I gotta love that picture. Actually, I'm staring at it right now because it happens to my desktop picture. The deceased. Another code? But there's nowhere to insert a password. Well, come on, Emily. Yeah, you're smarter than that, surely. No need, George. The message appeared with the card key. It's telling us where to use it. This is not the time to be joking around, Agent Morgan. Dr. Usha is below the deceased. With Anna. Below being underground, I take it. Simple. Simple. <laughs> and these are the people we have to work time with. to meet the mischievous architect of this little game. Nah. 
No, we got a key for the underground floor. Beta hater. See if we can find. Oh, let's talk to the team again. Yeah, there's autopsy results, and you're saying I should in the basement, right? Well, we could be. Dr. Johnson's in the basement, right? So let's go and see him. Well, I was waiting for you guys. Come on, let's move it. Let's see what's inside. Whoa. Careful there. Willie's tell us where to go. Dr. Usher, I presume. Usher, sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, you made it. Let's get started, shall we? This is Agent Morgan from the FBI. Mm, nice to meet you. I'm Usher Johnson, the doctor in this hospital. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. Excuse me, if you hear well, that. Agent Please. York. Are you a forensic practitioner? Let's just say I've dealt with corpses before. <laughs> Hey, we all. Battle of wits, by the way. Did you create that yourself? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see if our FBI agent could handle the task. Oh, I'm no FBI agent, and I handle it all right. Maybe I should sign up. You don't have much time. We need those autopsy results. Killing the mood is always, George. Challenging us without obstructing an investigation. You've angered the monarch. Hoo -hoo. Let's see what we have here. Yeah. The, mortis, the stiffening of the muscles. The time of death is estimated to be between 20 and 2200 hours. That's still quite early for such a crime to take place. You're not holding it anymore. The skull is also fractured, but that's unrelated to the cause of death. It probably happened to her after she was killed. Now, I first thought death by suffocation due to the marks on the neck, but after further investigation, I now have a different. 
direct cause of death was the loss of blood in the wound. Which means she was cut up while she was still alive. Yes, uh, a sharp knife was used. Her nails are clean, and with no skin cells from the attack. She also doesn't appear to have been bound nor badly beaten. She was apparently killed without resistance. The most tragic thing, however, was that she was unable to speak her story to anyone who could hear her cries. The perpetrator cut out his tongue. Well, I believe she was drugged first to phase her consciousness and then the killer killed. It's a bit of a dramatic change of music though. Traumatized past concerns. He probably cannot converse with them normally. Cutting out the tongue suggested very lonely religion. Either that or a true high core savior. He must get off on watching the women suffer, especially when they can't answer that. I'm really not suitable music for what's being told there. Much like Usher, please limit your report to your findings as a doctor. Criminal profile was my job. It's cool. It's cool. Anna died fully, deeply, painfully aware of what was happening to her. But uh. Tell me, what time did it stop raining on the night Anna was killed? Uh, just before I went to bed. Right after the movie on TV ended, so... Around 1 a.m.? What movie was it? An American Werewolf in London. Directed by John Landis, 1981. So the rain stopped, accompanied by the ending song, The Lunar Moon. Here we go with the movies again, York. George, would you mind if I examined Anna myself? What more do you hope to find? I'm sure I mentioned that I have a personal interest in cases like these. So let's examine the body. Or oh, uh, Asha. And, uh, you know. Why not? Oh yeah, let's look at that. Pickles, eh? Pickles did it. From her lack of resistance, I'd say that Anna's injuries happened very quickly. Unable to speak, she was then left to cry herself to death. Zack, it's all starting to come together. The perpetrator stayed with her for at least two hours until it stopped raining. At the estimated time of her death, it was still raining, but you can still see tear marks on her cheeks. That means she was killed under a roof somewhere. Hmm. She was then carried into the woods 
after it stopped breathing. Hmm. <clears throat> there, there's one other thing. Her tongue was removed with a very blunt knife. In fact, it's more likely it was simply chopped off. Asha, are you a passionate man? Well, not particularly, I'm, but I am man enough should the moment call for it. Who is you know personal you? question? Very passionate. Yes. Especially when it comes to women. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. George the perpetrator is just like you. He's passionate about me. He's a passionate kisser. This was a kiss of death. Ah, the perpetrator. Bit off honest tongue. We'll never get a dental print from a wound like this. But this is still a big leap. Seen that somewhere the jurisdiction before. of the FBI. I'm assuming command. I'll need you to assist me in the investigation. What in the hell do you mean, Agent Morgan? I know I said I was passionate, but you can't think I did this. That's not why I'm assuming command, George. You're a suspect just as much as every other passionate man on Earth. Let me show you something. Famous photo. A running theme here. There you go. Amazing, huh? I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but most of the details are top secret. George, Emily, we should be going. No need to stay here any longer. Okay. I have to sign the release. Just give me a moment. Very well. I'll go on ahead. It is a bit stuffy. Bishop takes queen. His rook takes your queen. And your knight takes rook. And check me. Huh? My first victory in the Grandmaster ranking. Your victory? I think not, Asher. But we know those faces and we know what it means. And I figure that's probably enough for now. Now that we're in the other world, yet again, for the second time so far. This should be fun. See you next time and let's play Deadly Premonition. Bye bye for now.